Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, February the 16th, 2022. Another very interesting day in the markets today. The S&P, along with the other three indices, did manage during the Globex session overnight to race up and got to a uh, resistance line at 44.83. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in because what we're counting is trying to count a minute second wave. And I originally had thought, okay, it's done. And we started trading this morning and the market came down. It broke the 50, uh, moving at, broke the 20, then broke the 50, moving average on the hourly chart. And I thought, wow, okay, everything's falling right into place. Then we had to go on hold and we waited for the news from the Fed. And as it ended up, all that was really being reported at two o'clock was the minutes from the last meeting, which we already knew. Nonetheless, it did not stop the reaction. And the initial reaction right at 11 o'clock, which tells me hmm, either somebody's getting this way ahead of everybody else, was an immediate rally. They, they took the index up substantially just right away. Then they brought it back down an equal amount, then they raced it back up again. And this was all without uh, Powell making any statement. And so he ended up not making any statement. So we're still in the dark about what the heck they were all talking about the other day when they had their emergency meeting. So a lot of rhetoric got repeated that we may have to do faster increases and we're all in favor and et cetera, et cetera. We need to go to get a grip on inflation. None of that none of that actually should sit well with any of us. Because in essence, the Fed is like just giving a bunch of rhetoric and a bunch of lip service to the fact that inflation is running away from us. And if we're going to trust the, the Federal Reserve to start taking steps to rein it back in, then that's not happening. And that just in my book tells me, it's like, well, either they're gonna have to do something pretty severe on um, and the March meeting, and we'll see. In the meantime, in the meantime, we re remain within this second, minute second wave. But what we have now done by racing back up and actually getting above this previous high at 44.83, we got a little bit more uh, this afternoon, just tells me that it's not complete. We do still need to allow for the market to get up to the resistance at the Fibonacci 618 level, which is 4497. And we're gonna call that all the way up to 4500. And then here, we're just now watching, and I guess NVIDIA's earnings have just come out, and they are a bit disappointing. So in any case, NVIDIA, not really going to have that big of an effect on the NASDAQ, but uh, excuse me, on the S&P, but it is a little bit. Okay, so, but I'm still would be expecting the market to go up and finish this wave two. Again, if this little bit of a rally completed it, then what I'm looking for is pretty much exactly what we started to see today where we got into the opening and then bam and bam, and then look at that, bam. At, at the two o'clock hour, they took it from 44.24 to 44.76. On old news, on nonsense. And now they're turning the video around and they just raced it up. And now, all the markets are going to be turning. As you can see, they're turning everything higher again. Okay, so where are we? What are we looking at? Same deal. None of that changes. We, we cannot really move ourselves into the emotions that go behind these erratic flip, flipping and flying in the futures markets based on earnings reports from uh, different companies. In fact, if you're watching, I've got NVIDIA highlighted. You can see NVIDIA went down to 250, it ran up to 273, is now trading back to 265. 
the entire moves don't make sense, but this is what traders do. Okay, so what can we expect for tomorrow here in the S&P? I think what we're now leaning towards is we're looking at how people wanna be prepared for Friday's expiration. Let's work this again a little bit longer term in terms of that it's a holiday weekend. So we still now got reports today that I don't think the market really paid any attention to, but nonetheless, that the, the uh, Russian armies are still now, again, building up troops along the borders with the Ukraine. Yesterday, we're taking it away. Today, we put them back. So again, we are now just sitting in, in a hotbed of waiting for news that's going to affect our markets. Uh, the war we know is not a good thing. Higher interest rates is not a good thing. Higher inflation is even worse. So the market move today, I, for the life of me, I'm like, okay, you want to consolidate a little bit longer? You want to push it up a little bit longer? You want different prices? Whatever the reasons were, I think it's a folly. Now that's my own personal opinion, but we need to trade that. So again, I just want to make a reference to mindset. With, with all of the news that is just hanging over the market, waiting for resolution so that we can see clearly what we can be doing or where we should be going in terms of prices. None of that has been resolved. That leaves us in this period of limbo, so to speak. Now, what does that then translate into how we want to trade? We have to continue to leave that news out there. It's not resolved. So it should not really come in and interfere with how we trade during the day. And what I, I want to emphasize is that if we can get into that mindset, today's move up would have been an opportunity to make money. It did end up being an, a great opportunity to make great money trading. It just provided opportunity after opportunity and not getting caught up in how high it was going, not getting caught up in, well, gee, they just reversed this whole pattern. And it actually did reverse off of something that I didn't believe that it should have done. But nonetheless, it was in line with what you look for in terms of where do, do I buy this? When it starts to break these moving averages on the way back up, particularly when it broke back above the 50 and then it broke back above the 20, you just buy it. They're going, they're taking it. And you can see that they did. So trades were available. That's my point. Regardless of, of my own personal feelings about what's hanging over the market, and regardless of what I think the market is building up and what our next step is, should not affect how I trade that day when they come in and push the market up $60 all at once. Within two or three minutes, this thing was sitting all the way up at the top. So tomorrow, I do expect that we probably will continue to move higher. If we should come in again, this could be it. We did go up and make a slight new high above that. This could be it. We, the 50% mark was right there and is now holding the market back, believe it or not. That's the 50% resistance. The hourly 200, it's sitting right above it. If it breaks below, same story. We'll start to see some acceleration. Then it's got to break below the four, the eight, the 20, the 50, just as it did overnight. And again, this morning on our opening. If it does it, we're going to play it the same way because we should get the same reaction. Now, so that's what we must stay open to. Trading what's in front of us, trading the price action, trading what the moving averages are telling us. When they break going back in the other direction, moving averages are telling you to go ahead and buy it because it's breaking above and we got the acceleration that accompanies a move like that.
Okay, so both upside and downside. We have to allow for potential going to 44.97. Then we have additional resistance above all that at 45.17. Okay, so those are in the picture just as strongly as they were yesterday. They remain in the picture today for tomorrow. Now, going down, same story. If it starts to break the moving averages, I'm looking for it to accelerate. As it accelerates, it should start to break the support zones. We have support at 44.42. Then I'd be looking for it to break 44.22. Then I'd be looking for it to break 44.09. Failure to do so tells you that something is else is in force. It got down here, it held it, it rallied, it came down, it tested it, it held it and then blasted. That news could have come out that showed, you know, maybe Powell would have stepped up to a mic and said something like interest rates are being raised. That would have driven it down, but it didn't. So they went on that already known information and blasted it to the moon. That's what happened. We need to be able to trade it without selling into this and getting your head handed to you. That's also my point. So keep open, trade the price action, trade what's in front of you, trade what the moving averages are telling you. We have an upside scenario and we also have the downside scenario. If either one kicks in, it should move substantially. We're at 44.67, that's a 30 point rise to 97 and <clears throat> an additional 17, almost 50 points if it moves up again and gets above 45. Okay, downside, if it really starts to slide, it's gonna be a solid move. If we're playing it just as it breaks these moving averages, you're in already with what the market is doing. Just don't get married to either side. All right, I'm gonna leave it right there. Our next update will be Thursday the 17th.